you guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. It's been a little while. Miss you guys. Excited to be filming. Just been doing a little bit of traveling and some work stuff um, behind the scenes, and uh, I'm back now for a little bit. Uh, we go to my hometown this weekend for a few days, and then uh, my next trip after that is September 5th to 10th. I'll be in Asia um, doing some fun things. And then after that, when I come back, we're basically going to be starting to move into the new house. Um, so yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to do a little chatty video uh, and run you guys through some of my favorite products I've been liking lately. Got some skincare, I've got some makeup, I've got some hair stuff. Let's do this. My first product, sorry, this is like so tarnished. Like the label isn't even a label anymore really. But this is the Cover Effects Bronzing Drops in Sunkissed. I just love these so much, they're so nice. Um, they are just kind of like the perfect like tan color. They have a range of shades so I would recommend this if you are kind of like light to maybe a little bit tanned if you like a natural bronzer. Um, but it just blends out so beautifully and it leaves kind of this nice sheen. It has almost like kind of a pearlescence to it but it's not glittery. It just more so looks kind of healthy. You got that healthy glow thing going on. Anyways, I've been using them like crazy. Um, I really haven't switched up my bronzer from this in, in quite a while now. I think I might have mentioned this in a favorites video before, but I'm mentioning it again. The only downside of these for me is that they're ridiculously expensive. So that's the only thing for me. Other than that, I think they're great. Uh, they blend out really nicely. You have good working time with them, but when they set, they do last quite a long time. So yeah, I'm down with them. I usually just kind of dot them on and uh, blend it out with a beauty blender. You guys have seen me apply them before. The next thing on my favorites is actually super recent. Um, I've just been trying it out this week. I got it in the mail for PR, uh, and that is the Olympia's Wonderland Lancome Highlighter. First of all, the packaging is the most precious thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's a cushion highlighter. So it's like those kind of cushion foundations you'd be seeing. Um, so I've just kind of been applying this by, I'll just kind of dip the small end of my beauty blender in there and just kind of pop it on top. And I really like it. It's like a nice natural highlight. That's what I'm wearing right now. Check it out. I've just been so into like cream and liquid products for the face lately. I've really, really been loving just like dewy all over, <laughs> no matteness taking place just anywhere. I'm just digging the whole look of being gently dipped into a vat of sweat. So anyways, I've really been liking that a lot. It's just kind of a nice sheer, natural looking highlight. It's not anything too crazy. Because it's so sheer, it almost provides more of like a gloss effect as opposed to something that's like a super intense pigmented highlight. So it will work on a variety of skin tones. I would just recommend like running into Sephora and swatching it on your hand and seeing how it works for you. Um, just because it's kind of a different texture than you'd be used to. Uh, so yeah. So I have two different foundations for you guys. You know that I'm always on my hunt for my favorite foundation. One foundation I've really been liking is actually the BB cream. I know this is the tiniest little sample ever, but it's lasted me so long. This is the Skin 79 BB cream in orange, obviously. It's like one of the original and most popular BB creams out of Korea. Um, it comes in a very small select range of shades. Obviously that's just kind of the demographic in Korea, so they don't have a huge shade range, um, but the orange one is a little bit more kind of yellow toned in my opinion. Some of the other ones are a little bit more pink, some are a little bit more neutral or almost gray. Um, so I do find that sometimes you need to warm this up um, just because it can shift a little too neutral uh, and it just needs a little bit of warmth back in there. But this covers so well. It's quite thick upon application, but when it sets, it like sets, it lasts, it wears really well, it feels very comfortable, it's not super matte, it's not way too dewy, it's just like a nice natural finish. Um, I've really, really been liking this, so I'll definitely be picking up the full size. And apparently it's not even that expensive, which is A+. And there's UV protection, SPF 50+, PA++++. Not sure what that means. The next foundation I've been really liking is the Burberry Fresh Glow Foundation. I've been mixing the shade Honey and the shade Ochre Nude, but here's something fun and interesting. I actually haven't been mixing this with moisturizer. 
I know. I actually really like this on its own. It doesn't seem to settle into any of my fine lines. It's nice and sheer, but it still has good coverage. It's what I'm wearing right now. I just have not been loving foundations by themselves. I just feel like they're too heavy. They're too cakey. They're too drying. It just doesn't look how I want it to look. But this has been so nice, actually. The only thing is that I find myself using quite a bit of it, um, especially if I'm using it with my Artiste brush, which is what I've been using lately for my foundation. It just seems to like suck it up so much. So it is a little bit more on the expensive side. And because I end up using a little bit more, that's kind of a downside for me, but it's a beautiful formula. It's nice and glowy. Uh, it's really just like fresh looking. Um, it provides good coverage while still letting a little bit of your skin shine through, which you guys know I'm about that life. The other thing that I picked up kind of recently from Burberry was their concealer. Uh, super limited shade range, like really, really like depressingly small. I think there's five shades total, or at least that was what was available at the Sephora that I was in. Here's what happened. Don't know if I'm ready to go through this heartbreak of telling the story. Jamie Page, ya fucker. She got me hooked on Tom Ford concealer and I was like, okay, this is now my religion. It's my life. It's everything that I need, want, desire. Went in to go buy a refill because I ran out of it. I think you know what's coming next discontinued my shit gets discontinued every fucking time it drives me bonkers you don't understand you don't understand everything that's dear to me gets ripped from my fucking hands it's horrific so every store that i go into has a different fucking rigmarole to put me through that was the whitest shit i ever said i go into one store and they're like oh don't worry they're just extending the shade range if they were extending the shade range why would they get rid of all of them another person said that they were changing the packaging which fine, that makes a little bit more sense, but I still don't believe it for a second. And there's other people that say that they don't know what's going on, they just haven't had it in the stock for a long time, and they're not supposed to be getting it back in stock until January. I know what this means, it means it's never fucking coming back. <laughs> so anyways, I've been on the hunt for a new concealer because I've told you guys, like, there's nothing that compares to that Tom Ford concealer for me. It's so fucking expensive, but it's so beautiful. I've been trying out the Burberry concealer. It's kind of a similar uh, sort of like pen squishy thing at the top. I hate this packaging. I'm fine with like the application of it. I don't really care about that part, but I just hate how messy it gets. And I feel like you're spending so much money on it that the packaging should stay nice. I don't know. But anyways, I've really been liking this concealer too. I don't like it as much as the Tom Ford one, but I feel like it's the same type of feeling. It's a little bit more liquidy. Um, it applies a little bit more sheer and it blends out really nicely. Still got that good coverage, but it's just not so overwhelming. I told you guys I kind of had stepped away from Shape Tape a little bit because I just felt like when I was wearing a little bit more of a sheer foundation, Shape Tape was just like too opaque. It just looked really obvious and bizarre to have these super opaque, really intensely covered under eyes and the nice sheer foundation everywhere else. But it is a really nice formula, so I've been liking it and I've been using it nonstop. I'm literally asking for fucking trouble. You know, I like to stir the pot. Subculture palette. Guys, I don't know what to say. I've, I, I've actually been liking this palette. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into it. I have a full review up on it, but I have been traveling with this. I've been using it. I really, really like it. Um, it's a little bit of a trickier formula, but it hasn't really been a deterrent for me. I still really like the colors. I feel like it's a really unique palette. Um, and I don't know, man. I just dig it. I've been using it. I like it. It's what I want. It's everything I want. And more. Next thing I've really been liking is the color Fig from Nude Sticks. This is one of their magnetic matte eye colors. There it is right there. These are super long wearing. I like just kind of putting that on my eye and buffing it out with the Sonia Kashuk number 116 brush. It's just such a beautiful color and apparently a lot of people use this on their lips too, but I have not tried it yet. It's just such a good like mauve color. It's really, really pretty. It's not too colorful. It's a little bit more neutral, so it's super easy to wear no matter how you want to go about it. And as you guys know, I've mentioned this formula before. I just like it because it's so easy to pop on the lid and just buff out for like the quickest smoky eye ever. The next thing I've really been liking is the M Cosmetics liquid liner. Uh, this was sent to me in PR as well. Um, I just, I don't know, man. It's kind of like Kat Von D Trooper, but like a step up. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know if I was ready to throw that out there. The only thing that was kind of bothering me about the Kat Von D liner is I felt like it would almost dry out during application. Like I would be applying like a big old wing. And by the time that I was done the wing on this eye, the pen would be so dry that I'd have to like put the cap back on and kind of like wait and shake it and then go back in on the other eye a couple minutes later because it would just get dry and almost tacky. Whereas I feel like this one for some reason just doesn't seem to dry out as quickly. It's super black, it's super long wearing. It doesn't seem to transfer. It doesn't seem to come off when my eyes are 
watery. It just, it's just, just a good like staple liner. I've really been liking it. I feel like how can you improve upon things that are so simple, but they did it. So my poor little Clarisonic, I haven't really been fucking with it for a while now. I just felt like my Clarisonic was so harsh on my skin and it sometimes seemed to irritate my breakouts. I feel like a lot of the people who have really clear, nice skin like their Clarisonic, they have no issues with it because it's just like a really nice, deep, clean feeling. Um, but I do find that a lot of the people that have actual skin issues tend to um, shy away from them because it just can be too rough and too kind of um, aggressive on, you know, skin that's a little bit more, uh, problematic. But Clarisonic sent me this like range. It was these three brush heads. I think it was called like the cashmere collection or something, or this brush head only is called the cashmere one. I can't remember. Or I think it's called like Lux. Anyways, whatever. You guys can look it up. I'll, I'll link it below. Anyways, this was the middle one from the set of three that I got. Um, and I think, like I said, it's called the cashmere one. It's so lovely. It's really soft, it's really gentle, it's not nearly as like stiff and short and um, intense as the other ones. You definitely won't get the same kind of like really deep cleaning, intense feeling um, that you get from like the traditional Clarisonic heads, but that's what I kind of like about it. I don't need to like exfoliate every layer of my skin off every single night. I just feel like this does a good job of like cleaning and removing, but it's really, really gentle, like so gentle that I feel like I can use it on my eyeballs. So anyways, this has kind of made me fall back in love with my Clarisonic because I really had stepped away from it for a little bit. I just wasn't using it as much. Um, but uh, I charged I charged the old boy up and we've been, uh, we've been having good times together. Not like that though. Ah, this is another Jamie Page recommendation. That fucking girl, she drives me bonkers. Um, She's trying to force me to buy the Drunk Elephant skincare and I was like, nah dude, I got my Sunday Riley shit. I don't need yo skincare, but I got it. I did get it, yeah. I picked this up from Sephora. So this is the TLC Framboose Glycolic Night Serum. That sounds like a Starbucks drink. I like the packaging because it twists like this. I think that's nice. Anyways, this is a 12% AHA BHA blend. Um, I've been using this at night. So what I've been doing is using my CEO serum, my good jeans, and then my Tidal moisturizer in the morning from Sunday Riley. And then at night I've been using this while cleansing my skin, this, and then using my UFO oil. And that's it at nighttime. And it's, it's really, it's nice. It's nice, man. It's been helping a lot with my skin texture. I have some pretty deep um, acne scarring and stuff like that over on this side. You'll see my videos usually. I've been having some deep scarring, some texture issues. Good Jeans has helped a lot with it, um, but I feel like this almost kind of like took it a step further. I don't know. I like it. And it seems like my skin, like the overall just kind of color of it. I'm just gonna put this down now if that's okay. Uh, I feel like the overall color of my skin is a lot just kind of more seamless. It's not like I have like these huge red patches or anything like that. Like it just kind of seems to be a little bit more even all over. I don't know, man. I've just been on my little skincare journey. I feel like I'm finding some good little products here and there um, that have just worked and continually worked. Like they don't seem to stop working. I also picked up from Drunk Elephant the it's called like baby facial or something like that. I haven't tried it yet. Um, on the packaging, it does recommend to stop using all other like active ingredient products when you're using that. So I'm probably gonna do it like when my skin's like a little bit clearer and I don't feel like I need to like be using the stuff that I'm using currently. And I'll probably try that facial out and see how, how it goes. So I'll keep you guys updated if you're interested uh, to hear about some of the other drunk elephant stuff. I know a lot of you guys were recommending for me to try it out as well. And you guys were asking if I had and if I had thoughts on it. So my first, Introduction to Drunk Elephant. I like it, man. I like it, it's nice. This is also unscented and it doesn't have any color to it. So if you have particularly sensitive skin to um, dyes and fragrances, definitely Drunk Elephant will be a little bit better suited to you than uh, you know something like Sunday Riley or whatever. <sighs> this is my last one, you guys. I wanted to include my updated favorite purple shampoo. Been back in the, the blonde phase, you know? So the last time I went into Carl at Axis, if you don't know Carl, he's my hairdresser. Love him, love him so much. So anyways, this last time that I went in, we went with more of a kind of silvery blonde. I know I said I never would, but here we are. And kind of the issue I had when I was super blonde or even when I was silver was that I was having to constantly use toning shampoos. And I found some that didn't work at all. I found others that did work, but even if they worked in terms of toning it, it made my hair like super limp, super elastic -y. It was just, I mean, 
if you have like blonde or silver hair, you know, you know what I mean? It's really fucked <laughs> the stuff that happens to your hair during that time. So Axis is the salon that I go to. They have their own range of products. Um, and they kind of recently came out with this shampoo, which is called Purple Rain. It does such a good job of toning for me without being too harsh. Like I feel like I can use this every single wash if I want to. It tones it without making it super like dry or limp or elastic-y. Like it just seems to kind of keep my hair where it's at. Um, and feel nice and healthy still. Um, yeah, I've been really liking that shampoo. I'm on my second bottle now um, And that's what I've been using for my toning shampoo in case you were wondering. I did pick up the overtone uh, Conditioner in the Pastel purple a lot of you guys have recommended that to me as a conditioner and Jamie Page was talking about it on her snapchat as well It's a powerful toner, but for me, I don't like anything <laughs> So this is just what my life is now. Okay, so don't mind that going on in the background. It seems like it's just gonna be hanging out there with us for the rest of this video. Anyways, as I was saying, that conditioner is quite a powerful toner. I just personally don't like any formula that is going to leave me worried. I feel like every single time I use that conditioner, I either don't leave it on long enough because I'm so paranoid about it turning purple, at which point my hair is still super yellow, or I leave it on too long and then it's like purple. I have like purple strands throughout. So for me, I don't want it to have to be something where I'm like on edge in the shower, like trying to decide how long to leave it in because I feel like I've never gotten it to a point where like it's perfect, where like it actually just like isn't an issue. It just tones my hair kind of thing without turning it purple. So I don't know, for me, that's not my favorite conditioner. I personally don't love it. But there's the update because I know that I had talked to some of you guys about that conditioner and that I was trying it. So there's my update. I don't like it. Anyways, you guys, that's everything for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something cool today. Let me know what your favorites have been in the comments because I want to know because I like shopping, but I am on a no buy, I swear to God. Buying a house, being an adult, no buy. That's me, that's, the, that's my mantra, that's what I live by. Okay, bye. <laughs>